Hey everybody, this is Bill with Family Handyman. Replacing a faucet shouldn't be an intimidating project for most homeowners. Your new faucet will come with instructions, but they're not gonna tell you everything. So I've got a few tips for you today to ensure that your faucet replacement will go smoothly. Let's get started. Before you go out and buy your new faucet, you wanna be sure that you have the right spacing and configuration. Some sinks and sink tops will have just one hole that'll limit you in your selection, but the standard spacing for most faucets is either four inches, as we have on this old faucet. On this newer faucet, we've got eight inches. So make sure that you find the correct spacing, and also keep in mind that a lot of manufacturers are making faucets that are dubbed easy to install. These are really great because they cut down the amount of time and make it easier for you to get in and get the job done quickly. So before you remove your old faucet, you're definitely gonna to wanna to shut the water off. Uh, you can look for shutoffs underneath the sink, turn them down. If you don't have shutoffs, which is often the case under a sink, then go into the basement, look in the ceiling for a shutoff valve. If you don't find one there, then you sometimes have to go all the way back to the main water meter and just shut it down. So once you get underneath your sink and start removing the old faucet, you want to make sure to make as much space as possible. Don't waste time disconnecting everything that's already there. Uh, don't hesitate to cut it out of the way. You don't need to hang on to your old supply lines or even old stop valves like this. I highly recommend replacing as much as possible. You'd like to upgrade to a new ball valve like this and a new supply hose uh, that's got braided stainless steel on the outside of it. If your new faucet is part of a new vanity, it's a lot easier to install it on the top and drop the top into place as opposed to reaching up underneath. If you do have to reach underneath, get an old furniture blanket or a towel to lay on to make yourself comfortable. A lot of new faucets will come with rubber gaskets underneath the fixtures to seal them to the top. But if they don't, I suggest using plumber's putty. Find a non-staining type of plumber's putty uh, that won't blemish your top or your sink. It's really easy to work with. You just roll it out into a, a snake of sorts and then you press it in along the bottom of your fixture before you set it. When you then set it on the top, all you do is push down and squeeze out the excess putty, which you can then simply peel away and clean up once you tighten the fixture from underneath. Another good thing to do with your plumber's putty is to seal your drain assembly. This particular drain assembly came with a rubber gasket, so I'm not going to worry about it, but if it didn't have it, you just put a ring around this, and then when it comes up to the bottom of the sink, you tighten the whole assembly and that putty will squeeze out and you can easily clean it up inside the sink. So now that the sink is in place, uh, we got to install the P-trap. The first thing you want to do is make sure you trim your extension tube so that it lines up with your wall pipe. Um, I had to take about an inch off of this. Then you take your washer, just make sure it's oriented so the bevel is down. Slip your nut on first. Get the washer on there, and then you can sort of put it all together. Uh, there's already a washer inside of this nut, and the wall tube does not need a washer because it's got this type of flange on it. So you want to put these together. It's really important with the plastic fittings that you don't use a wrench on them. Just, just finger tighten them um, is the best way to go. So when you're making all of your threaded connections, you want to have Teflon tape. It's your friend. It's only a buck a roll. Uh, don't use it sparingly. I use it on every threaded connection. Even if I have a supply hose that has a rubber washer inside of it, I still use it. Uh, wrap it clockwise so that when you spin your connection on, it doesn't take the tape off. So when you're connecting your supply hoses to your shutoff valves, you have to make sure that you tighten it just the right amount. If you under tighten it, it's going to leak. If you over tighten it, it's going to leak. Most of the hose manufacturers say a quarter turn beyond snug is all they need. But I found that you usually need to give it at least just a little bit more than a half a turn. So once everything's complete and you've got your tools put away, it's always a good idea to come back and check for any leaks. Uh, you want to be sure that you're not going to have some small drip that's going to ruin the inside of your cabinet or flooring. I always grab tissue paper and go around and check each connection to make sure uh, that there aren't any drips. 
Hopefully, if you followed all the advice I've given today, your tissue paper is going to come out blot-free like this one. So as you can see, there's more than meets the eye when installing a faucet. If you follow the tips I've given you today, I'm sure your next faucet install will go without a hitch. So for more tips, tricks, and nifty bits, visit us at FamilyHandyMan.com.